The Evans Bevan story begins in the early 1830s with the increasing demand for coal to fuel the iron and steel industries and copper smelting of the lower Swansea Valley and Neath. To this end, the directors of the Maesteg Iron Company commissioned the new brewery to be built at Caddickston and Neath, and the brewery was to be known as the Vale of Neath Brewery. As the demand for coal increased, so the demand for beer to slake the thirst of the colliers increased. By the early 1840s, the Vale of Neath was a brewery was a prosperous, fast-expanding brewery, boasting sales of over 400 barrels of beer a week, which at that time was an incredible sales statistic. This combination of coal and beer should undoubtedly have spelt success, and this was the case at the start. All that was needed was someone to take control. Evan Evans, a local entrepreneur and confectioner in the town of Neath, saw the opportunity to brew beer and was brewing beer in his small brewery beside the Grant Arms in the middle of Neath. He brewed in the shadow of the Great Vale of Neath Brewery, but when in 1843 that crumbling business burnt in an inferno of fire, Evans Bevan seized his chance. Over four consecutive years, the brewery was put up for auction, but on each occasion failed to attract a bid attractive enough for the banks. But in 1844, Evan Evans triumphed and purchased the brewery with three maltings and a series of pubs for 1,500 pounds, a mere snip. <coughs> Evan Evans was a great entrepreneur, a man who sniffed business opportunities and developed them and in the 1830s had scored a major scoop in South Wales by becoming the sole agent for Guinness, the Dublin Brewers. The Evans Bevan Vale of Neath Brewery at Caddoxton was born from a spectacular fire, but control had passed to a shrewd businessman. began to develop other industrial interests, interests in coal, buying more pubs, but most importantly of all, in 1848, when his daughter Mary married David Bevan, he saw the opportunity to create a mining empire. And his influence in the area is still plain today. Seven Sisters is named after the seven daughters of David Bevan, son of Evans Bevan as was the Seven Sisters Colliery, proof, if ever, that the family was respected as much more than just brewers and coal owners. By the end of the 19th century, the Evans Bevan coal mining business was vast. It was employing over 10,000 colliers, and the question of succession and who was to follow David Bevan in the family business was yet to be determined. In the early 1930s, the Evans Bevan name became synonymous with brewing, with David Evans Bevan becoming the chairman of the company. So both Evans Bevan and Rumney were punch drunk with success, but less than half a century later, their empires had crumbled and disappeared. So what went wrong? Coal and brewing. As one industry flourished, the other exploded too. In the 1930s, Rumney and the Vale of Neath breweries were enjoying huge success. But 
Romney had 362 public houses. Evans Bevan, with its collieries and brewery, was among the largest employers in Britain. Even so, the Vale of Neath brewery still got bigger and bigger. In 1942, the new boss, David Evans Bevan, extravagantly bought Margam Castle and estate from the Talbot family, although he never lived there. It was the dynamism of David Evans Bevan that drove the brewery forward in the 40s and the 50s, acquiring more pubs, acquiring smaller breweries, but most importantly of all, creating the largest brewing operation in South Wales. The Vale of Neath Brewery was unquestionably the driving beer behind the great collieries in Wales. Thus making the brewery the largest and some of its ale the most popular in South Wales. Bevan's Bitter, that was the one of the finest bitters around here at that time. Because we had our own water here, yeah? we had our own wells here. Yeah? When you drank it, it left a nice tang in the mouth. It, you, you felt that it was drinking a bitter, not like these carbonated things today. Well, we brewed um, a nice dark mild, and we brewed an Indian pale ale, which is the best in the country, they reckon, wasn't it? Could, could be a... Could be a... The bit, Bevan's bitter, I think, was the best around South Wales. David Evans Bevan was a man who believed in life. He believed in the opportunity of giving people the same opportunity that he had had. David Evans Bevan, or Sir David actually, in the end, he used to come around the office and uh, he'd chat to everyone. He wouldn't sort of only go to one section, he'd go to all departments, have a chat with them all. And he, by and large, he was, he was a nice man to work for. There was also apophrical stories of David Evans Bevan's management of the collieries to coincide with his brewing interests. Strong rumours that at times he turned off the ventilation just before the shift ended to drive the thirst levels up in his colliers who would troop out to their local Vale of Neath brewery pubs. <laughs> on dinner time you did go at one o'clock and that place, that place, they would get, you'd get tramp, stamped to death if it was on the road because they were all running from the brewery into the pub. Well, they're half, they're half hour dinner. They have about two pints each and then dive back out. There were good days out at Buckins Brewery in Romney, too. We worked at the brewery and everybody had an allowance, which we called lapping. And it was a couple of flagons of beer a day. You get two in the morning and you'd, you'd make them last all day if you could. It was quite jolly going home and uh, a lot of people used to call in this pub on the way home and didn't go out after. Once they went home, that was it, until 6 o'clock next morning when they got up and came to work again. Romney stretched itself even further. It had its greedy eye on local outlets like Ely Brewery, which was fighting a takeover bid from a London finance corporation. But the chairman and managing director, Lazarus Nidic, was fighting the takeovers. A hasty Ely shareholder meeting was held. There were hecklers in the audience, and Nidic was taunted. His hope to hold on to the reins failed. Colonel Harry Llewellyn, the famous Olympic show jumper, then chairman of the Romney Breweries, bought shares and led a successful merger. Romney now owned both Ely and Crosswells in Cardiff. There was Ely on one side of the railway line, and on the other was Crosswells, which Romney had taken over in the 1930s. And then, they took over Ely as well in 1959 and decided essentially to amalgamate the two and built a new brewery on the Crosswell site in 1962. So Romney, having promised not to, closed the Ely brewery. But these combined companies formed the giant of the valleys with over 750 pubs. But change was afoot. Before the war, brewing had been a family business. But now, predators began to prowl. The 60s were troubled times for the coal industry too. And if miners weren't working, they certainly weren't drinking. There must be some kind of way out of here Said a joker to the thief what happened in the 60s was the one significant development. The trouble was that um, in the 1950s and 60s, there became a lot more interest from outsiders in the brewing industry because of the property the industry had tied up in pubs. 
In this new land-obsessed age, pubs and breweries were potential gold mines, and the bigger the brewer, the bigger the pot. Crumney and the Vale of Neath breweries were sitting targets. A lot of the independent companies became rather worried and went under what was called the Whitbread umbrella. Whitbread, a large London brewery, would take a small share stake and that would then protect the brewery from outsiders coming in and taking over. And Rumney was one of the first ones to go under the Whitbread umbrella in the early 1950s. They provided technical support for the brewery, so it was a good deal for Rumney at the start. Whitbread, the English brewer, had been in Wales since the early 19th century, in particular one Colonel Bill Whitbread, who by this time had shares in Rumney. But how long would the good days last, and would Rumney themselves be victims of amalgamation? And what about the Vale of Neath brewery? Would they fall victim too? In this case, fate dealt a hard hand. The end of the Evans Bevan Brewing Dynasty came in 1967 when a chance meeting on the Swansea London Pullman train ended up with Sir David sitting next to Colonel Bill Whitbread. During a three and a half hour journey to London, the future of the Caddickston Brewery was determined and it was to be sold to the Whitbread Brewing Group that was expanding in Wales. At the time, the 1st of October 1967, it was deemed a sad and desperate blow for the people of Neath, who could hardly believe that their local hero, Sir David, had sold the brewery. But the truth was, Sir David had extracted some major concessions from Whitbread, the future of the 200 employees, the future of the brewery, and the future of the Evans Bevan brands. In an era of downgrading and streamlining were these empty promises. There was certainly an icy chill and a feeling of doom in the air. In 1968, there was a catastrophic fire, the second in its long history, which destroyed the brewery. Firemen from Port Talbot, Port Adawe, Britain Ferry, Port Aprith, Neath, fought 80-foot flames in vain as the roof from the five-storey brewery thundered to the floor. And with that, a short time afterwards, came the closure of the Vale of Neath Brewery. It started and ended in an inferno of fire, but Whitbread still took control. And what about Rumney? Rumney began to struggle more, and Whitbread decided in the end to take over Rumney and made an offer of 4.2 million, and that was accepted. So the brewery business and its 240 pubs were sold with a definite assurance of continuation of employment for all employees. But two years later, it was to be proved that these two were empty promises. In 1969, the inevitable merger of the two great Welsh breweries, Rumney and Vale of Neath, took place. This led to the closure of the Vale of Neath's bottling halls and the movement of most of the production to Cardiff. So Whitbread Wales was formed and these two great South Wales brewing dynasties were amalgamated. This could have been a new beginning, but was instead a final chapter. And finally, in 1972, the Vale of Neath Caddickston Brewery closed with the loss of 140 jobs. A sad day for the town, a sad day for the people who were made redundant, and a sad end to a rich and proud brewing history that was the Evans Bevan Brewery. Should never have closed it. Should never have closed it because I moved to another brewery up in Rumley, and um, of course uh, they say that was a good brewery up there, which it was, but it was a nicer brewery and. Uh, a better brewery, yeah. Today, a housing estate stands on the brewery site and street names are the only testament to the Evans-Bevan Empire. This brewing empire, founded on coal, 
has, like coal, disappeared.